Okay, so hopefully you've watched the previous video where we showed this um, uh, example of a simple input processing output flowchart. Now I want to go to something a bit more complicated. So let's make a new uh, document. Go to File, New. Once again, this is going to be uh, select flowchart and then BPMN 2.0. And now I want to teach you how to handle a conditional um, or a decision um, diamond. Once again, Control A to select all this, hit delete, let's get rid of it. Uh, here's the next example I want you to work on. We're going to skip down to problem two. All right, Captain Beefnut owns the Beefnut Donut Shop. He needs a program that will calculate and print bills for his customers. His usual price for donuts is 60 cents each, but in order to increase sales, he has reduced the price to 40 cents if each customer buys 12 or more. Develop a flowchart for this. Okay, not so bad. Let's go back here to Lucid Chart. Oops, go to my new one. There it is. Uh, start with the start symbol. Start. Let's continue on. Maybe make that a bit smaller. Next, we're going to need to follow that input processing output model. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and collect these or copy them. I like Lucid Chart because it lets me copy and paste across web pages. Okay, so to collect inputs, let's use the data box here, the data symbol. Input. Okay, uh, in this case, the only input we need is the quantity of donuts. QTY. Alright, we just created a variable, so don't forget now we gotta make ourselves a uh, legend. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it up here this time. Legend uh, QTY equals number of donuts desired whatever number of donuts that'll work uh, let's left align that there we go all right um, connect it there we go next now we know how many donuts they want perform processing well it should be pretty simple right it's the quantity times the price however um, we have this problem or this decision to make we need to decide if we're going to charge them 60 cents or 40 cents so what we need then is what's called the decision symbol. The decision symbol, there's a few rules it has to follow. In fact, let me tell you about some rules here about uh, data symbols too. Data symbols can only have one, uh, one arrow going in and one arrow going out. Okay, these are good rules to memorize. Always one in, always one out. All right, if you break that rule, then your flowchart's not following BPMN 2.0 notation and it's incorrect. A decision symbol always has one coming in and two coming out. So a decision, what goes inside the symbol here, is a question. And the question has to be phrased in a way that it'll only have a yes or no response. So for example, QTY greater than or equal to 12 question mark. Either yes or no. Now notice there's other ways I could do this. I could say, is it greater than 11? That would accomplish the same, whoops. There we go. Is it greater than 11? That accomplishes the same thing. Is it less than uh, 12? That would accomplish the same thing. doesn't really matter how you do it as long as it meets the criteria. I'm going to stick with greater than or equal to 12. All right, let's add our connector uh, right here. There we go. I'm going to move this down a bit, give ourselves some room to work. Okay, I'm going to create two process boxes, make these a little bit smaller, there we go. In this process box, I'm going to say, uh, if yes, if it's greater than 12, then the T for total, oh, it looks like I've got another variable I need to add over here, T equals total, um, bill. Alright, if it's greater than 12, I'm going to say total equals the quantity of donuts times, whoops, times uh, 0.4. Now I'll copy this. And now if it's less than 12, quantity is going to equal 0.6. So Lucid Chart's usually pretty smart. If I were to simply start connecting these things, it's going to guess 
Okay, got them reversed. So notice it put a yes or a no here. Whenever I draw a line coming off of a decision symbol, it knows that one of them is going to represent the true condition or the yes condition. The other one's going to represent the false, but I think it got them backwards. If it's greater, oh no, actually it didn't look. If it's greater than or equal to 12, if that's evaluated as true, they're only going to spend 40 cents a donut. If it's not true, they're going to spend 60 cents a donut. So I got it right. Okay, now it's time to output the results. We performed the processing. The processing happened in these one of those two boxes. The decision symbol isn't a processing symbol, but it was something necessary to control the flow of the logic. So, um, remember the rules. With data symbols, I can have one arrow coming in, one arrow coming out. With decision symbols, it's one arrow coming in and always two arrows going out, never more or less. With processing boxes, like data, it's always one arrow coming in and one arrow coming out. So here's our problem. If I were to make an arrow come out of here and an arrow come out of here, that would violate which rule? Well, let's say this is my output and I want to print a receipt. Okay, so I'm going to print the total, also the quantity which they gave us in the first place. So I put it in parentheses because it came directly from inputs and it wasn't something that I calculated. So here's my problem. If I were to connect this to this and this to this, and then let's say I decided now it's time to end this thing. Oh, there it is. Accidentally made two. Get rid of that guy. And then I add this symbol. The problem if I do this is that you can see that I've broken one of my rules. I have two arrows coming in and one arrow going out. Now, why is that a rule anyway? Why does it matter? Well, this flowchart can actually be exported as code using certain programs. I can take this and have it write Java code or C sharp code or whatever you, whatever you want. So I've got to follow the rules needed to generate automatic code from this box. And one of those rules is this one. So here's how we get around it. Let's click on these connectors, delete them. And we're going to use what's called a connector symbol. Sorry, those were flow symbols. I shouldn't have called them connectors. I'm going to delete that A in the middle of it. This doesn't need to be that big. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. That looks good. The whole purpose of the connector symbol is simply to allow you to break that rule. So I can have any number of flow lines that I want going into a connector, as many as I want, and I can have, but I should have only one uh, flow line coming out of a connector. I think I'm going to need to zoom in. There we go. There we go. Going into this, let's go down, make that line nice and straight. Am I not doing that well? There we go. Zoom back out. Put that up a bit. There we go. So now I haven't violated the rule anymore. I only have one line going in, one line going out. Here's my decision symbol in use. That's about it. So I want to do a couple of, or make a couple of modifications to this, uh, which are optional for you, but things that I like to do. Um, which help make your code better later on when you write code to implement the flowchart. So one rule I try to follow is that I don't, um, I don't like to put any numbers in a flowchart. Uh, we can pull numbers out of here and include them as constants is one word for them. Uh, we also call them inputs from setup. So let me first teach you what an input from setup is and then I'll show you how you can remove all these numbers out of there and which will make our flowcharts a bit more uh, dynamic and less likely to have problems in the future and be easier to update. So, so far I've shown you how to do a regular input, but there's another type of input that we may need on a problem. Let me minimize this a bit, move it down here, and that's called inputs from setup. So I'm going to move this across and I'm going to make another inputs box, bring it over here. Uh, I think I'm going to need to Click on this, delete it, move that over a bit, and give ourselves some more room on, well, that too. Make this a bit wider so I can write the word inputs. All right, come on. There you go. Inputs from setup. Okay, I still want a little bit more room. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay, an input for, from setup is a variable you're going to need to perform processing but it's not going to come from the user so 
in this case, quantity comes from the, from the user. I'm the user, I'm the cashier. I'm entering in how many donuts the customer wants. Even though it's the customer who's determining quantity, me as the user, I'm the one entering this in. So quantity goes here. Inputs from setup are things that we're going to, they're going to always be there. They're not going to change. They're not going to be variable. It's something that will always exist. For example, I'm going to make one called uh, TR for tax rate. All right, Tax is something that's going to be the same for every customer. So I'm not going to ask the customer to tell me how much tax they, tax they want to pay. Uh, they're simply going to pay whatever, my, whatever the going tax rate is and what my system has in there. So let me add my connector in from start to input from setup. And I'm going to come up here because I just added a new variable TR. And I'm going to add TR equals tax rate. OK. This thing, I better fix the alignment on it. There we go. So it stops moving up. Although I like legend being centered. There we go. OK. So TR tax rate. And I'm actually going to put this right here and in our legends so we know that tax rate equals 0 0.0625 or whatever it is. I'm just guessing. There's our tax rate. All right, so look through, uh, uh, look through here. Now once I've grabbed input from setup, which is something that never changes, then I've got my inputs, which comes from the user. This does change each time. How am I going to modify this to include tax rate? Well, there's several ways I can do it. I'm simply going to come in here and say quantity times 4 um, put some parentheses around that uh, times uh, times 1 plus TR then that gives me um, 1 plus the tax rate that'll give me the uh, the total plus tax um, there's probably better ways of, of doing that but this works for my example here let's add that in to this one too quantity times 6 times 1 plus the tax rate. Okay, so I've included tax rate and now my total is going to reflect that. Really I should have broken it out into a separate calculation so I could show tax, but that's alright, we won't worry about that for this example. What I want to do though is I want to get rid of this 0 .4, 0 .6, and this 12. Okay, the reason why is if I hard code these numbers here, let's say I make another flow chart and I want to use these same discounts uh, somewhere else. So what happens if I change my mind later about what the discounts are? Then I have to come in here into my flowchart and edit this code. I, once I've decided on a flowchart and created it and I've agreed it's been checked off, everyone in my company agrees on it, I don't want to have to come back in here and mess with it at all. So it would be better to create a variable that reflects uh, the discounted price. So let's say DP equals discount price and FP equals full price. So discount price will specify right here in the legend is going to equal 0.4 full price is going to equal 0.6. So when I grab my inputs here I'm not going to ask the user to tell me what the discount price and full price is. I'm simply going to grab discount price full price as inputs from setup and I'm going to include these now in my model so I have them available. Then, let me move this down a bit, there we go. Okay, then when I get to this point where I've made a decision and it's time to calculate the total up here instead of referring to 0.4 I'm going to refer to the variable discount price and down here instead of 0.6 full price. So now those numbers aren't in here. There, now, if I want to use uh, discount price and full price in other flowcharts, I can. And I'll come back to this same legend and I'll change the values for them right here, which will then change them for any other flowchart that uses them. One other thing I can do is this 12. What if I decide and change my mind later that, you know what, 12 donuts is not the right number to, to give my discount for? I don't want to give a discount until they buy 24. Well, then I'd have to come in here to my flowchart and change this 12 to 24. But remember, I don't want to do that. So let's make another variable for that. We'll call it um, discount, or sorry, no, um, uh, I don't know, uh, DT for discount threshold equals 12 for now. It can be changed later. 
but now we'll simply grab the discount threshold as well and then right here we're going to ask is the quantity that the user gave us greater than or equal to the discount threshold if so calculate this total otherwise calculate this total print it out oops that shouldn't be start that should be end there we go there's a flowchart that includes includes a decision and uh, also inputs from setup and we no longer have any numbers in the flowchart at all